Now, the deal, the $500 billion deal, which is now $2.3 billion, was an uh, old mentee of mine, Klaus Kahnfeld. The, um, I'm not sure what Klaus was doing other than masturbating when he was 15, 16. But um, from the teenage to um, Klaus, Klaus was about in his late 50s when this happened. Um, and the deal signed on his birthday, as serendipity would have it. And we've got Mikey the Pizza Boy, came to me as a pizza roller. Now he's making movies. With guys like that. And I can go on. I could give a seminar from now until the summer. And they all share one thing. Focus, commitment, and they're willing to make sacrifices. Now, in 2017, when I, for accounting purposes, went over a trillion, uh, the, uh, which is now a, a trillion one, which is now 2.3 uh, uh, trillion, um, I get emails, not every day, but almost every day. Uh, I did a 2.1 million, and we, we follow up. We, we actually check the numbers, you know. Uh, 2 million, 18 million, 11 million, 51 million, blah, blah, blah. And... Uh, in the early years, we didn't check any numbers. I wish I had. The first six or seven years, I don't know who the fuck did what. I wish I had. Uh, but kids, you too, can do the same. Now, fortunately for me, there's no compression algorithm for experience. That's why I'm still a relatively hot commodity. Because you can't do an algorithm for many thousands of transactions and blah, blah. And, um, and right now, there's nobody even remotely close to have done as many transactions as I have. But um, I'm, I'm going to be gone someday, and it's going to be on YouTube, and now you're going to go home and try to figure out where the templates are, because I told you they're online. They are online. You're too stupid to find them, though. You won't find them. Some of you won't even try. We don't have to make every mistake ourselves. Some of you don't believe that. What differentiates high-performance people? Thinkers and doers. If you want to equate... Be, reading books as being a thinker, you, you can ele elevate yourself. You're not really that smart. But I have never, this is sli a slight Trump exaggeration, I have never thought about anything more than a second. Never. Never. During the uh, Muhammad, oh, not Muhammad Ali, um, Cassius Clay, as he used to be called, in 1965, when he fought Sonny Liston. Um, I went to a, a drive-in theater in Van Nuys where you could see the fight on a big screen. You were filled in, sitting in cars. And uh, everybody's drunk up. I was 17 years old. And uh, a car that was pulling out scraped our fender. So the five of us in the car, uh, all drunk up, we wanted to get out and fight, and they ran. So we chased them from Van Nuys to, the, you know, where the Hollywood sign is in Hollywood. Or you don't know about the Hollywood sign. And his um, car got stuck on a rock. So his wheels wouldn't spin. So I piled out of the car. I was driving. And this guy, about eight feet tall, 300 pounds, piles out of the car. And I said, what the fuck did you do, Dan? But the first thing I did is I ran over and I hit him as hard as I could in the jaw. And he fell down the cliff, dislocated his shoulder, and broke his knee or uh, collapsed his knee. Now I'm, phew, I'm sugar Ray Leonard now. Then he comes crawling up the hill. And he says, I was going to apologize. I felt this low. Now, I'm telling the story. We're at a USC uh, Nebraska football game several weeks later. And I'm telling the story to these girls. I'm trying to get in the girls' panties, and I'm, and I'm all fucked up, drunk and shit. And a guy puts his hand on my shoulder here, like a bear hand. And he says, uh, did you tell him I was going to apologize? Now, if you know the bleachers in the Coliseum, and I look up, now he looks 11 feet tall. And he says, I should be down there on the field. I was starting right tackles till you fucked me up. But I never thought about it. Never entered my mind to try to talk my way out of it. And that's the way I've been all my life. I got my ass kicked plenty of times, but not that time. And he went on to play professional football, was an all-pro, uh, all blah, blah, blah. 
I saw him one more time, and he was drunk, unfortunately. And uh, he says, you're still not telling that fucking story, are you, kid? <laughs> no, 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 are you cow? I forgot about that. That's in the past. Lying through my teeth. Might have got a hold of my skinny neck at that time. But I know if you're not an, an take-action person and you don't hang with, chill with, take-action uh, take people, this is never going to happen. Never. You're better off by yourself. Most of you are better off by yourself anyway. And this is not a journey, as some of my mentees say. This is a process that you can follow. It's got seven steps. They're clearly indicated on, the, um, on my site. And it's free. Mentoring, that goes without speaking. This is another one of my mentees. He's not so young, but he's super rich. Uh, he, came, he came to me. I'm just a Hungarian Forrest Gump with tears in his eyes. Now he's the biggest hospital owner in Hungary. A lot of you know Dan Locke. He came to me 23 years ago, pimples on his face and tears in his eyes. We all know about mentors. The one trait that Warren Buffett, Zuckerberg, Elon, Bill have, they all, they're all introverts. Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Big Three. I always thought of myself as, that, as one of them. And as I say, when I did this 28 years ago, they laughed at me. I'm already in a castle. I already made a lot of money. Now, I've been privileged to train active duty, Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force. And I have, I'm, I'm privileged to have uh, uh, mentored an active duty uh, naval officer, an active duty Air Force officer, doing roll-ups while they're on active duty. Uh, I'm privileged to train a ranger on deployment, uh, you know, getting bullet shot at him, rolling up. The system is so fucking easy. So, f isn't it? It is easy. Well, it is. Uh, it is, you know. But, you know, uh, well, anyway, I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing well. Okay? And I was privileged to speak at the Naval Academy a couple years ago. And uh, the girls are in the front row, and I said, uh, ladies, why are you called midshipmen? And they turned and they pointed at the commandant of the uh, Naval Academy, a three-star admiral. Ask him, sir. And then he said, tradition. And uh, so, uh, but they're called midshipmen, but they're gals. And so um, I think I flipped two or three of the, those cadets, or not midshipmen, excuse me, not cadets, uh, to uh, for, maybe uh, forget their naval career uh, when we talked about the kind of money that was available. Um, because you, you, if your dad is a, uh, a truck driver, he makes 70 grand a year, whatever, okay. He's an honorable profession. He's a carpenter. He's a school teacher. He's a lawyer, not so honorable profession, but I mean, uh, you're looking at chump change they make. Chump change, peanuts, nothing. My dad made 142 bucks, okay? That's less than chump change. But see, there's not that many kids that are willing to work two or three extra jobs that put food on the table like he was back in the day. Uh, I've trained Navy SEALs, Special Ops, Green Beret, Army Rangers. And being able to die for your country isn't the same as making money for your country. It's easier to die for your country. And there's one of uh, my Marine guys who uh, was able to get the QLA license plate, and I wasn't. I was fairly pissed about that. Um, lowest interest rates in 5,000 years. And guys, I, that's what I want you to do. I mean, just like a cocaine you snorted last night, you know? There's a lawsuit in Britain. They've turned the uh, bills into plastic. And I'm a, I, they rolled the bill like in a, a, a tube, and then they snort, and they've cut and infected their nose with the plastic, and they're suing the government. And they're going to win. That's where we are. Money is dirty. Money is the root of all evil. Money is not important. Money makes you a bad person. Money blinds you from the truth. Money makes you greedy. Other values are more important. It's no wonder nobody makes a lot of money, or almost nobody.
We've all heard one of these or maybe all of them. Surround yourself with those on the same mission as you. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Remember, association equals power. You hang out with monkeys, your life becomes a fucking circus. Success is like being pregnant. Everyone says congratulations, but nobody knows how many times you got fucked. You're born limitless, limiting beliefs, releasing, not gaining, emotional baggage. What learn can be unlearned. Stay aware of limiting beliefs of others. Get in touch with your emotions. Get mentors. Okay. Men in the day and what the fuck happened? We're protesting because Donald Trump is not mentally stable. I can't get a job because Trump is a racist. And as Pope John the Paul said, tell this to us, which it means it's all up to you kids. It's the end, but your new start from now on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my age is 22. Okay. Uh, I'll go right to the question. Uh, what is currently in, in COVID-19 time the best state to do uh, <clears throat> M&A in bed pants in terms of licenses uh, for transfers? Uh, the worst sort of states, I'll answer it another way. All states except New Jersey, Florida, and California because the licensing is tougher in those states. All the rest of the states are okay. Thank you very much, okay. Mr. Brenya. Go ahead. I'm going to be a trillionaire. God bless you. Hi, my name is Raghu. I'm 47, Dan. My question is uh, the difference between affirmations and goals, and which one should I, um, should I be reciting goals every day? Goals is, okay, I want to be, uh, how tall are you? I'm 5'7". I want to be uh, six foot two. okay, that's the goal. The affirmation is I am comfortable growing to six foot two and not looking like a freak. Thank you. You're comfortable, you're, it's easy peasy, and, uh, uh, and you're seeing it, and, uh, and uh, you're visualizing. All these goals and affirmations, you have to visualize uh, the affirmation. Like I used to say, because of my uh, no athletic ability, uh, if I was a foot taller and black, I might have played in the NBA. Okay, well, even if I was three feet taller, I wouldn't have played in the NBA because I can't dribble the fucking ball. But see, but your subconscious doesn't know you're full of shit, okay? Like when the, the girls lose 100 pounds, they know the odds of them losing 100 pounds are pretty close to zero. All you have to do is look at the stats. And then when they lose the 100 pounds, because they've seen themselves losing 100 pounds, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Got it? Thank you, Dan. I'm going to become a candidate. Okay, thank you. Next. Hey, Mr. Pena, I'm 28 years old. My question is, if you were 28 years old today, what would be your first acquisition? Well, I'd do um, low-hanging fruit, home health, uh, or assisted living. I mean, it's, there's 82 jillion of them all across the United States and in Europe. It's easy peasy. Uh, and um, if you're in the United States, I would utilize SBA. Uh, and, of course, I, I talk about it on, uh, on the website. I would use the 60-40 model. Uh, where the, the banks love because you're keeping the sellers involved. Thank okay? you. You're welcome. Hi, Mr. Pena. I had a question about... Your age. Uh, I'm 24 years old. Okay. I had a question about um, acquiring versus um, creating revenue in the tech industry. When you're dealing with high uh, valuation companies and overconfident CEOs... No, uh, no, 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 okay. You're, you're not finding motivated sellers. Well, then you're not asking enough people. You're not making enough calls. I mean, I'm just telling you. Not everybody's a cocky Mark Zuckerberg in the tech business. 2000, I mean, I'm not even going to ask how many cold calls you have, because I know you haven't made shit. You're 2,000 cold calls. I don't, care what in, I don't care what industry it is. You're 2,000 cold calls away from being a fucking millionaire. How many times do I have to say this? I've been saying it 28 and a half years, but you don't want to be a salesman. You don't want to be like an insurance peddler making cold calls, and that's the fucking truth. You don't want to go home and tell your wife, your cousin, your brother, I'm just a fucking peddler. I'm proud to be a fucking salesman. 
Okay. So what I was going to ask is, uh, if you're a company that has a product and has technical IP, um, would you... Did you say IP? IP, yeah. Okay. Would you, uh, would you go straight into acquiring other companies? Or yes, would you bolt them on. Great. Right, but remember, okay. structure follows strategy. Structure follows strategy. You're not just bolting these pieces of shit on willy-nilly. It's got to make sense, and that's why you have a dream team, and that's why you have a chairman, and that's why you have a board. And you don't need to figure any of this out. They will. And if they don't, you got the wrong people. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.